Hey, what's up everyone? So the original release date for Marvel's Avengers has come and gone, with no new updates unfortunately. Which means it's back to scrounging through trailers to dig up as many new details as we can on the game. In this video, I'm focusing on the game overview trailer that gives us a brief look at gear, resources, and skills. So we're going to spend the whole video breaking down each of those elements. I do also want to give a minor disclaimer that I will be using info from the leaked achievements. This video will have no story spoilers in it, but the achievements do shed some light on unlockables and max levels in the game. So I just want to point that out to anyone who is averse to hearing those details. But again, no story spoilers, just general collectibles and levels. But with that said, let's start looking at everything revealed for Iron Man. Okay, so let's freeze here and start to digest everything on this screen. We'll start with the four different categories, melee, ranged, defense, and heroic. Each of these correspond to a different type of gear, since there are four rows of equipped gear. As we can see, the top row corresponds to melee gear, which is our first piece of gear. Right off the bat, I want to point out something weird about this. The reticle is hovering over the blue gauntlet, but we're being shown the green one. You can even see the gear power level mismatch. This leads me to believe that this was some kind of last minute edit in the footage, possibly to hide a spoiler or reveal in the game they weren't ready to show. Some gear has different tech companies associated with it, like Stark or Pym, so maybe this one showed something secret. Or maybe it's just a glitch. I don't know, but I wanted to point that out since it can make this section a little bit confusing. But we do get a look at its associated perk when the menu zooms out. This one is called Vanguard Strike Gauntlets, and its perk reads, Chance defeating enemies with melee attacks to gain an ultimate heroic charge burst. The grammar is a bit weird, but it sounds like when equipped, there will be a slight chance that our ultimate ability will charge faster after defeating an enemy, which sounds like a pretty solid ability. But let's now look at the gear we were supposed to see, which is called Nightfire Strike Gauntlets, with the associated perk being named Nightfire. This perk reads, Chance on Headshot to Trigger an Explosion AoE Burst. This perk sounds more like it applies to a ranged repulsor ability than melee abilities, so I don't think perks are always associated with their gear type. We'll see another example of this later with gear that gives a defensive perk with a heroic gear as well. The gear is also color-coded. In this case, we can see that green corresponds to uncommon gear. Blue corresponds to rare, and purple is epic. Based on the leaked achievements, we can see there will also be legendary gear, as well as more beyond that. We can also see one of the resources that we will be collecting in the game to upgrade gear, and that is silicate. We get to see a few other resources in this clip, namely polymer, isotope, reagent, and catalyst, but the rest are all still a mystery. Lastly, unequipped gear can be dismantled for resources, while equipped gear cannot, probably to prevent you from accidentally dismantling your best item. Also, I just want to mention that equipping gear does not affect how your character will look in the game, only outfits will do that. Let's now look at a piece of ranged gear, the Advanced RT node. This gauntlet has the Nightfire ability on it again, but it also has an additional ability, Flechette, which reads, Defeating enemies with critical ranged attacks grants a temporary damage buff. Going back to the equipped gear on the left, we can see colored squares next to the gear pieces. I think each square corresponds to how many perks that piece of gear has, and the color is the rarity of each perk. If that's true, it looks like green gear will only get one perk, while blue and purple get two. Next, we can barely get a glimpse at the defense gear piece, the pushback armor plates. This one reads, Perfect parrying creates an AoE burst that pushes back nearby enemies. Requires the ability to perfect parry. If I had to guess, perfect parry will probably require us to block at a specific moment when being attacked. Creating an AoE burst with that actually sounds pretty cool too. One thing I haven't mentioned yet is the word resilience here. We've also seen other words here like fortitude and resolve. I would assume that these are defense ratings, but I would also expect different wording. Resilience, resolve, and fortitude all sound like mental strength and personal willpower instead of physical descriptors like durability, which is something I find interesting. I don't know how each descriptor differentiates from the other in the game, but in Marvel Ultimate Alliance 3, Resilience was used to describe defense against energy and magic, so maybe Avengers will use a similar system. Now we're on to the first example of Heroic Gear. If you're not sure what Heroic Gear is, Heroics are the different special abilities in the game. For example, Iron Man's Repulsor Beam. We'll look more in depth at those momentarily, but for now, you just need to know that they boost those special attacks. But back to gear. This one is called the Brazen Reactor Coil, and we can see it is developed by Stark Industries. This associated perk reads, Chance on taking damage to create an AoE burst that stuns enemies. I think each one of these gear pieces has mentioned AoE damage, so I'm not sure if that is just a coincidence with the limited gear here, 
or if that will be a common passive perk for Iron Man, but I do like the sound of all of these perks regardless. After this, we get another heroic gear piece, the Vario Beam Accelerator developed by Pym Technologies. Pym being, of course, Hank Pym, aka Ant-Man from the comics. We know factions will be groups in the game that you can buy gear from, so I think this suggests that Stark Industries and Pym Tech will be two of the factions in the game. But let's look at the perks for this piece of gear. The first one is White Light, enter low health to gain a health burst, and Persistent, chance on taking damage to gain a temporary defense buff. So this piece of gear, although in the heroic category, offers a lot of defensive perks. However, since we don't have this piece of gear equipped, we can see the effects it is having on our overall stats. In this case, reducing our defense but giving us a boost to heroic, which seems to even out a bit with the perks. If you want a more detailed look at the specific stats, you can press R3 to check those out. None of the perks shown in this clip have been unlocked yet except this one, which we can see happen now. This also shows that the perk we need to unlock is the one that is highlighted. Once the first perk in a gear piece is unlocked, we can see that additional resources are needed for the next one, in this case an isotope and a catalyst. We can also press R2 to compare different gear pieces, which is a feature I'm happy to see included. Those are all the gear pieces we get to see, so let's work the perimeter now and check out what else is shown. Underneath your equipped gear you can see gear power, which takes an average of all your equipped gear to come up with that number. If keeping track of all of this gear is too daunting, we can hold L2 to equip our best gear automatically, and I'm assuming best is in reference to whatever gives us the highest overall stats. You may also be curious about these two resources at the top right. I'm going to assume that these are our in-game currencies. The first one with the shield icon is probably shield credits, acquired through completing challenges. I don't know what it's used for in the game yet, since we don't see it used in either the gear menu or the skills menu. Although it does decrease when we move on to the skills menu, I thought it was due to the gear perk being upgraded, but it looks like we don't need shield tokens for that, and skills only need skill points, so my guess is that it has something to do with unlocking costumes. Which leads us to this gold Avengers logo currency. I'm going to assume that this is our real life money for microtransactions, which have been confirmed to be cosmetic based items like costumes. Emotes and nameplates could be part of the microtransactions as well, but that hasn't been confirmed yet. Of course, I'm just speculating on these two resources. They could be used for something else in the game, but I'm thinking it's pretty likely that these are the two forms of currency in the game. Next, we have two empty slots for artifacts. We don't know much about artifacts except for their two associated leaked achievements, one of which is unlocked for acquiring three artifacts, which sounds pretty low to me, which leads me to believe artifacts will be pretty rare in the game. The other achievement confirms that we can upgrade our artifacts. Due to the rarity and the villainous laugh in the title, I'm thinking these artifacts will be really powerful and worth searching for. It also looks like we have to unlock the second artifact slot. At the top left we can see our customizable hero card. This player has a power level of 38, which I think is still pretty early in the game, because the leaked achievement associated with power level unlocks when you get a hero to power level 300. I'm assuming that's the max level, but that's not confirmed. I'm not quite sure what level 5 is exactly, but I'm assuming that is our hero level, since there is an achievement that unlocks when you get 5 heroes to hero level 5. The Iron Man picture for the background is called a nameplate. There will be a variety of these to choose from, some of which we can see as a pre-order bonus. The star and Iron Man icon in the corner are probably in reference to either our preferred hero or our highest level hero in the game. Before we move on, let's look at the categories on the menu at the top. We have objectives, which are likely the different missions we have active at the moment. Skills, which we'll discuss momentarily, gear, appearance, which we'll also look at in a moment, and we get some hints at what might be in collections through the leaked achievements, since there are achievements for unlocking comic book sets and intelligence files. Then of course the roster, which will consist of all the heroes we've unlocked so far. Let's check out the skills section next. So we can see four different types of attacks, melee, repulsor, laser, and rockets. We get to see a couple abilities from the laser section. The first one is Laser Sweep, which isn't unlocked yet because we need the Precision Laser first. Laser Sweep is a heavy attack, and we can see how it works in this gameplay window. The skill description reads, With Precision Laser equipped, press Triangle to activate a sweeping beam that cuts through enemies, inflicting stun and wound damage. You'll notice it specifies that you need to have Precision Laser equipped. Heroes can switch between different attack types using the D-pad. We can see this displayed for Iron Man in the TGS gameplay demo. 
Now, if you notice the icon at the top center of the screen, Daisuke's switching between his signature repulsor attacks and his rocket attacks. Like right there, he can lock on and fire rocket, then he just hits the D-pad to swap between them. We can also do a combo with this attack based on the three triangle prompts. I also find it interesting how many different damage types there are. There is damage, impact, stun, and status damage, which is wound here, with stun being the highest level. I think we can see stun shown a bit in the way the aim bots are recoiling backwards when hit with the laser. As far as the wound status damage, I would guess that is similar to bleed damage, where the enemy continues to take damage slowly after the attack. There could be a separate bleed category, or maybe they chose the word wound because robots don't bleed. The next ability unlocked after laser sweep is laser scythe. This one is cool because it is specifically for mid-air attacks. The button prompts are the same as the prior attack, but the attacks change. In the damage description, we now see reactions, in this case, launch, stagger, and slam. Each of these correspond to a press of triangle. We can see the first one play out in the air, where Iron Man launches an enemy into the air with him. After this, he probably hits them again to stagger them in midair, and then we finish up the combo by slamming them back into the ground. Pretty cool in my opinion. And that's just the first menu of attacks. We now get to see specialty attacks, which will encompass those heroic abilities I mentioned earlier. There are three different types of heroic abilities, and each one is associated with a different button on the controller. L1 is the support heroic ability, R1 is the assault heroic ability, and L1 plus R1 is the ultimate heroic ability. You can see an in-game example of this layout for Thor during A-Day. His ultimate ability, the top one, isn't equipped, but we can see his support heroic ability, which supports him by enhancing his attacks with electricity, and then his assault heroic ability, which seems to be this tornado attack followed with a blast. We also see that Iron Man's assault heroic ability is his Unibeam. Here we get to see one of the ultimate heroic abilities, which are these smart rockets. Press L1 and R1 to fire a spread of seeking rockets that can target up to five enemies. Rockets inflict collateral damage on detonation. The effects are listed as breaks enemy block, impact medium, and reaction flyback. I think flyback is what it sounds like. The enemy will be swept off their feet and sent hurtling backwards. By the way, you can unlock all the abilities shown here, but you can only equip one of each. Also, hidden in the back are defensive abilities, but unfortunately we can't see them. We also aren't able to see inside the capability and utility skill trees. But I think that covers everything we can see on the skills menu, so let's finish up on the appearance menu. This is where we can see all of our unlocked suits, five of which are on display for Stark. But there are a total of 24 outfit slots on this menu. I'm sure that's not a final number either, since suits are the primary form of funding for future DLCs so expect that number to increase as we get new DLCs and updates. Some of these suits will be unlockable by beating certain challenges in the game, while others will be unlocked with your real money. There are also a couple we have seen for pre-orders, as well as this look at the Stark Tech suits. Alongside outfits, we also see menus for emotes and nameplates. We don't know if these will be part of the microtransactions as well, but expect to see a lot of these unlocked through gameplay, if not all of them. So that was everything I was able to find during this breakdown. I think I caught everything, but if there was anything I missed, definitely let me know in the comments below. I'm also interested to hear your thoughts on everything I discussed in the game as well, like gear and abilities. It was a real heartbreaker to see May 15th come and go with no updates, but I think we will start to hear more soon, possibly this month, since Square Enix is confirmed to be in Phase 1 of the Summer Game Fest. So stay tuned to this channel for more updates, and keep an eye on the Summer Game Fest for more announcements as well. It also looks like Square Enix will be in the IGN Summer Showcase, as well as host their own presentation. So there should be three opportunities to see some news about Avengers coming up. September is only a few months away, so marketing should be kicking into gear soon. If you're hyped about the game and want to discuss news and updates with others, you can join us on Discord, the link is in the description below. Anyone is welcome, and I've been dying to talk about the game with anyone I can, so the more the merrier. So stay tuned for more Avengers videos on this channel, but until then, Thank you for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.